There's something fishy about it, and it's good. Hey guys, I know this series ended a little while ago, but I just watched it literally in two days. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about 11-22-63. Now, I like certain Stephen King films. I like a lot of the films of his that aren't horror films, like Green Mile, Shawshank Redemption. But I do like other ones. I like The Mist. I love The Mist. It's one of the most depressing horror films I've ever seen. It's great. As for his miniseries, I've never really watched them in full except for The Stand, which was done in the 90s, and then The Storm of the Century. The Storm of the Century I loved. I thought that was great. The Stand, yeah. And so then to see some another series, from what I've just seen about other stuff, especially in Nostalgia Critic, King's TV series aren't really that great sometimes. So when they were said that they were going to do a TV series about his novel, about a guy going back in time to try and save JFK, I was interested, and I was even more interested when it was James Franco who was attached to the project. So, how does it hold up? Well, I actually do very much enjoy it. I thought it was really cool. I like the pacing. Admittedly, you might find the pacing to be a little bit slow, especially that first episode, but you have to understand that they also are trying to fill in a lot and a lot of information. There's a lot that happens in this book. And admittedly, a lot of the stuff doesn't get passed on. Now, I don't know, I didn't read the book myself, but my friend, Sean, who has read the book and then watched the series before, he told me basically everything that happened in the book, and so I had this reference. So, at least to say, aside from some pretty made, a few major bits, not like essential, but big in the book, but not essential to the story, this, the film, the, the series does the job. However, there are some issues here and there, but I'll get to that later. The whole point of James Franco going back in time and being able to save JFK is very interesting because that is his purpose. That's why he's gone back in time to do. But what we see is a guy who actually has found a true life, like found the life that he wanted in a different time. And that's something that I really enjoyed was seeing this guy who didn't belong in his time finding a life in this time back 60 years or 50 years ago. So to see him interact with these people, have relationships, become friends with people and deal with the conflicts of others, that was great. And then when he meets this girl, got Sadie, and she's great. And that's another thing too, is aside from maybe one person in this film, everyone in this film was great in terms of acting. I thought that the cast was very well done. Admittedly, there is like a few characters that are stereotypes for Stephen King, especially Sadie's ex-husband, who's a crazy psychopath, but that's usually, that usually happens in these films and with King's work. However, from besides from him, Everything works out great until the last episode. Now, the whole point of him going back in time, there's been this force that's been working against him, and that is time itself. Time is working against him to stop him from doing this. Anytime he starts to meddle with things, he doesn't, it works, it almost doesn't work for him. If not, time will try to stop him from doing it. They will, things will change from what he knows, or that's in from the future. So, as he gets, he knows this. Like, he's been living in the past for three years, and he knows that any time he tries to interfere with anything to do with JFK, the time works against him. So he always tries to do different things. He always will, he will stay aside. He won't interfere. He'll just observe. However, in the last moment, he gets to where JFK is going to get shot, and he, instead of parking maybe down the road or a little, maybe a few blocks away, he parks fucking miles away from where the shooting is going to happen. And then he's like, oh, wait, well, uh, the car won't start. Or wait, I've got all these issues. Like, what, what the fuck, dude? His character, admittedly, that's probably one of the biggest issues with this series is James Franco's character, as nice as he is sometimes, he's really fucking dumb. Like, really stupid. There's a lot of moments that he... Just, you know, why is he doing this? Why is he letting this continue? Why did he not think of that? I, I don't enjoy that. However, the thing that I didn't like even more was the MacGuffin ending. Now, for some of you, I understand the moral obligation of the story. I remember, I understand the kind of the moral lesson, and I like how it ends for the character, but 
in a way, but I don't like it at the same time because it feels that almost nothing is mitigated, that his consequences he doesn't get consequences for what he does, and I thought that was very... I don't know, I think that was a bit underwhelming. I was... It was too happy, I guess. Maybe that's my biggest complaint about this series, is the ending is t too happy. So, but that's a common thing with most of these, especially with King novels. You, you'll you either be really satisfied with the ending, or you're gonna be pissed. And... I'm kind of on the latter, but I did like the whole project. I liked the entire thing leading up to it. Admittedly, I thought the ending was a bit eh, but I still enjoyed this series. So in the end, I'm going to give 11.22.63 a 5 out of 7. I enjoyed it. I think you guys should watch it. It's a great period piece. It's very well done about the 60s. Everything in that is show is impeccably well done. Sure, some of it's not perfect there are some parts where you're gonna be like that's really stupid but you will enjoy it as for the ending that's a toss-up anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this review uh i'll see you guys next time